Okay. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the New Testament survey, BC 103. And today's class, we're going to look at the very last letter of Apostle Paul. That's the letter to Philemon, which is the private or the personal letter that Apostle Paul wrote. Even before we could begin to start studying, uh, can I request one of you all to please lead us in prayer? We well, can unmute and pray. Sri Radha, would you like to pray, please? Anyone from the class? Nina, Rin? Okay, Sri, go ahead and pray. Anyone from the class? Maybe there's some problem with Sri Radha's phone. Uh, anyone from the class? Jesus, uh, Lord, we thank you for this morning, oh Lord Father. Thank you for uh, your goodness, your grace, Lord. Uh, thank you for this day, oh Lord Father, that you have given in our lives, Lord. Lord, as we're going to read from your word, oh Lord Father, let your presence be with us, oh Lord Father. Give us the wisdom, Lord Father. Give us your spirit, oh Lord Father, to understand, Lord, and uh, to grow in your word, Jesus. We give you all the glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. So I request everyone to please turn to the letter to Philemon. This book has only one chapter. Um, you have taken it. Yeah, this book has one chapter with 25 scripture verses. Let me present the slide. Okay, not much of slide today because it's only one chapter. So the letter to Philemon, has, it's only one chapter with 25 scripture verses. And in Hebrew, the book of Philemon is again a personal or a private letter written by a friend to a friend. It is a shortest letter, I could say, of Apostle Paul, which consists of about 334 Greek words. 334 Greek words. And the very purpose of this letter is to bring a reconciliation between the two individuals, between Philemon, who was a master, and Onesimus, who was a slave. So there was a uh, 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 the the letter is between the reconciliation or between a master and a slave. So it is a very uh, valuable book. That is one of the reason why the canon has decided to add this letter into the New Testament, where we discover the heart of a leader. Apostle Paul, being a leader, he does not take Onesimus for granted or Philemon. He makes sure that there is a reconciliation brought in between these two individuals. We also see a man um, who takes the example of Jesus who was willing to lay down his life for another person. So knowing Apostle Paul, and we uh, covered at least 12 letters of his, we see how Apostle Paul takes every uh, small situation as an opportunity to share the gospel. So even in this simple letter, a letter of reconciliation, we see how Apostle Paul takes an opportunity to share the gospel 
bring a right understanding why should a master forgive a slave he shares the gospel in that and then he brings a true reconciliation between both of them Ma'am, your voice is made mm -hmm. Okay, I'm sorry by mistake. The mute is. Uh, am I audible now? Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think by mistake. Okay, so this letter, I'm audible, right? Okay, okay, good. Thank you. Yeah, so we see that. Uh, Apostle Paul takes the example. He shares the gospel uh, between uh, Onesimus and uh, and Philemon, and he tries to bring a reconciliation. He takes every opportunity to share the gospel. He, he goes one step beyond. He also puts himself as a sacrifice. He, he is willing to put his life on the line of a slave with no position, power, or resource. And he's writing this letter when Apostle Paul is in the first Roman imprisonment. He's been imprisoned in his own rented house. Okay, so Apostle Paul is in is chained to a soldier in his own rented house, and um, he was free to receive people um, to uh, to visit him at his house, and that's how he used to preach and teach and write letters and send it across with them. So can I request one of you all to please turn to Acts chapter 31, verse 30 and 31. Can I request one of you all to please unmute and read? Prince, can you please unmute and read Acts, Book of Acts, 31? Am I audible? Okay. Acts chapter 31, verse 30 and 31. Can I request one of you all to please read? Anthony, please go ahead. Can you hear me? Yeah, Anthony, yes, sir. Please go ahead. Please, it's like there's no 31 in Acts. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me check the scripture, recheck. Please give me a minute. 
Yeah, right. Um, problem. Okay. Let me get that scripture right, please. Sorry. Oh, thanks. Okay, um, I'll get that scripture corrected. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. So what we say is uh, in the book of Acts, we read that Apostle Paul was imprisoned in the first imprisonment. And then he was in a uh, uh, in the Rome in his own house in his own rented house. He was imprisoned, was chained to a soldier, and he was ministering to people who was visiting him. So, um, so with that, we will move on to this book, okay? Uh, the letter to Philemon, and this letter to Philemon has twenty five scripture verses, and it is divided into three portions. So, verse four to seven. It talks about, you know, Paul's commendation. Paul is praising. How is he praising? He's looking back and then he's praising, I thank my God always. And then he goes ahead, greetings with the salutation. And then in the middle of the letter, that's the body of the letter from verse 8 to 17, we see Paul's request. Paul is making a plea. He's requesting Philemon. He's saying on the basis of of the slaves conversation and verse 12 to 17 when we check he is actually again he's addressing on the basis of the slaves the owner's friendship that is the friendship between apostle paul and philemon he's looking within the relationship that he has with both of them and he's trying to make a plea make a request and at the end of this letter that is uh, verse 18 to 21 we see paul's promise he's trying to look beyond he's trying to look beyond and say philemon if there's anything that onesimus owes to you definitely used to him okay and i will repay it to you when i'm out of my chains i will repay it to you he's giving a promise he's laying down himself on the place of the slave and he's saying i will take the ownership of onesimus and i will repay to you the whole theme in this letter we see is um that uh, the thread that runs through the letter is forgiveness and accepting one another as brothers and sisters and christ is so important it's so vital that is one of the reason why this letter has been added because in those days um, the slavery was very evident that was the uh, the actual lifestyle where people were living in master and slavery there was always a division between them and dear apostle paul is writing this letter to Philemon to bring that forgiveness and acceptance between the brother, uh, acceptance between um, both of them in Christ Jesus. We also see uh, uh, in the, throughout the letter, we see that uh, we, we learn a lot of spiritual lessons. But before that, we will go into Onesimus. We'll see what was uh, who was Onesimus who was Onesimus. He was one such person who had encounter with Apostle Paul in Rome when he had ran away from uh, when he ran away from his master. So Onesimus was a slave. Onesimus was a slave and he lived with his master in Colossae uh, with Philemon. And the key part is Philemon had a home church there. And that's how when Philemon had a home church, uh, he was ministered by Apostle Paul and he began a church there and he was running. And Onesimus was a slave under Philemon. And uh, we don't know what happened between them, but eventually Onesimus takes certain master's goods and he runs away from the uh, from Colossae, from Philemon's home, into a large city, Rome, to be lost there. When he ran away from there, maybe uh, in Rome, he, he, he runs into Epaphras, who was a leader, who was trained by Apostle Paul. Now he meets Epaphras in Rome, and eventually Epaphras uh, brings him 
to Apostle Paul. So when he brings him to Apostle Paul, uh, they get introduced, then Apostle Paul shares the gospel with Onesimus. And as he ministered to him, he learns uh, about Onesimus' background. We get to know about uh, the master Philemon, of whom he already knew. So knowing, and then he gives some time change grow in the Lord. The minute he has come to a point where he has accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, and there's a true repentance in Onesimus, and he is ready, he is prepared. And this is the point where Apostle Paul brings in place Onesimus to a ministry part. He makes sure Onesimus returns to Philemon and asks for an apology. And then Philemon has been prepared in such a way that he's ready to forgive Onesimus, who was a slave once upon a time. So there's a, a miraculous conversion, or we can say a transformation of heart in Onesimus, because the ministry that Apostle Paul carried. Now, whoever meets Apostle Paul will encounter Jesus. That is the fact. Whoever met him have never left him without knowing Jesus. Now, Onesimus meets an apostle. Paul starts to minister him. The Holy Spirit brings a transformation into his heart, who was once called useless. Onesimus was useless, and now he's become useful. In fact, um, you know, Paul makes a statement, bring him back. He's been useful to me in the ministry. I, I request you all to please, it is a very short letter. In fact, I thought even before I could start this class, we will read through the letter, but then I don't think we would have enough of time to uh, ponder upon the points that this letter carries. So the transformed Onesimus has just been seated in front of Apostle Paul in the, uh, um, the prison or house arrest, and Paul pens a letter to Philemon. Paul pens it to Philemon. He says, I have seen Onesimus serving faithful to me. In that short period of time, Onesimus tries to serve Apostle Paul when he is behind the chain. And he gains Apostle Paul's attention, his heart. And he sees that Onesimus has truly been repented and changed from his heart. So Paul writes this letter to Philemon saying that, Philemon, be gracious on Onesimus. Forgive him. Actually speaking, under the Roman law, there could be a very severe punishment for the slave who runs away from the master, taking the master's goods. It can also cost his life. Though the letter does not say what exactly that he robbed from Philemon, but then the very act of taking away something that belongs to the master and running away will cause death for the slave. And here, the relationship that Apostle Paul had with Philemon, he writes a letter of reconciliation. And the letter is carried by Onesimus along with the chickens. They carry this letter to Colossians, where the home church of Philemon was there. So in the letter, Paul appeals. He says, I'm not requesting you on any legal grounds. Because if he addresses anything on legal grounds, slaves need to be punished. So that Apostle Paul is writing. He's writing. Let me turn to that scripture, please. Uh, Yeah, I'm reading a letter to Philemon, chapter 1, verse 16. No longer a slave, but as someone more than a slave, as a brother in Christ, especially dear to me. But how much more to you, 
both in flesh as a servant and in the Lord as a fellow believer. So if you consider me as a partner, welcome and accept him as you would me. The Apostle Paul is putting himself in Onesimus in a place of a slave and he's requesting, he's pleading Philemon, forgive him for the relationship what we have but on the spiritual grounds. Forgive him. And whatever he has wronged you in any way or owes you anything, charge that account to me. I'm reading verse 18. Give it to me. I, Paul, write with my own hand. I will repay it in fully to you. I will repay it in fully to you. Owe to me. Even, you know, he's saying, I will repay it fully to you, even to me. Let me have... Uh, yeah, I'm in verse, verse 20. Let me have some benefit and joy from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. 21 says, I write to you perfectly confident of your obedient compliance, since I know that you will do even more than what I ask. Look at the trust. Look at the relationship what they both have as a brother in Christ. So with that, he requests. Give me a minute, please. Thank you. So Apostle, Put, uh, Apostle Paul, here we see, he put some extra pressure on Philemon. When we read point to point, like verse 8 to 9, when we read, we see that. I'm just reading verse 8 to 9. Therefore, on the basis of these facts, though I have enough confidence in Christ to order you to do what is appropriate, Yet for love's sake, I prefer to appeal to you since I am such a person as Paul, an old man, and now as a prisoner for the sake of Christ Jesus. I appeal to you for my own spiritual child, Onesimus. So he has accepted him as a son, spiritual son, whom I have fathered in the faith. So it's not like immediately he met Onesimus is writing. No, he has taken some time to nurture him, to correct him, to um, help him grow in the Lord. And now the relationship between Apostle Paul and Onesimus is very different. It is like father and son relationship. Okay, And now he is writing that while I'm in captive in these chains, once he was useless to you. But now he is indeed useful to you as well as to me. See, he is not taking the whole right and he's saying, okay, give me your slave. He's again saying that he's useful to you now and as well as to me. I have sent him back to you in person. That is like sending my very heart. You see how precious Onesimus is turned to Apostle Paul and the Apostle Paul is giving a very high value. He's saying that I'm sending my own heart, own self to you. Just like Jesus. So what do we see here? By indicating that he would not command Philemon, but he's making a request. Though uh, Apostle Paul have that right, okay, as a spiritual father over Philemon or as a friend or a fellow worker in Christ. He has all the right to instruct Philemon, listen, this is how it is. I've met uh, Onesimus, he has changed, accept him, no. But then he's requesting as a friend, he's requesting, he's telling him, and he's pleading to Philemon on a reputed good character uh, in full faith and in love. By asking for a personal favor, is asking for favor as their partner in Christ. 
and he's also offering to pay any debt, any debt that Onesimus owes you, Philemon. Put it on me. I will repay that debt to you. And he's also going and, you know, personally sympathizing with Philemon, saying that, listen, I'm under chain right now. And I'm also an old aged man. Okay, he is bringing himself to a place like, yes, I'm helpless, but even then I'm telling you that he's changed. He's become useful now. And also you see there's a matter of obedience here. He's not taking Philemon for granted, but he's saying that, yes, you were a master. As a master, Onesimus, you need to, as a law of the land, go set things right with your master and then you can come back. So he sends him with a letter, hoping that Philemon will forgive him and accept him not as a slave, but as a fellow believer, fellow brother in Christ Jesus. So this letter would have written around 62 to 64 AD. AD yeah, the central theme was... Uh, uh, forgiveness and reconciliation it has to do with receiving and uh, you know uh, forgiving and reconcile reconciling between the master and the slave so the uh, the key word in this book is to receive receive and we see the gospel message that uh, apostle paul takes an opportunity to share the gospel in this letter is the sinner has ran away from God. He's making a picture portrait. A sinner has ran away from God. And the law condemned the sinner and gave him no right to appeal. And the other sinner could never pay the debt that he owed, that he owes God or the master in this letter. So what happens? The sinner flees to the arms of Jesus. And then Jesus stepped in to pay the debt of the sinner. So what happens? Now the sinner turns away from his sinful nature and he brings forth the gift of the spirit, the fruit of the spirit, that is the repentance. He repents from his heart. There's a transformation that is happening within. We also see through this letter, the sinner forgiveness, not on the basis of law, definitely no, because the law will expect a judgment. Law will expect the punishment for the very act but then the sinner receives forgiveness on the basis of grace. Grace. The grace of God. The sinner becomes a new creature. And he's been freed from the bondage. He's become a new creation in Christ Jesus. All the old things, the old nature passed away. Behold, he's become new. So this is the picture that Apostle Paul is depicting from this letter. It becomes very clear. Even in the letter when he's writing to Philemon, he says, whatever Onesimus owes, put it on me. I, I owe you and I will repay to you. He's not asking Philemon to forgive him on the basis of our relationship. He's saying no. I will love you. I will take it upon me. And then he asks for the true, uh, true repentance, uh, true forgiveness, so that there can be a true reconciliation between Philemon and Onesimus. So some of the unique features from this book that we see is, look at the sympathy between um, for the sake of Onesimus, he writes 
Apostle Paul, I am a prisoner of Christ who is aged and I am a spiritual father, but in chains. Now my chain is the gospel, in the gospel. And he also mentions that I have a hope to be released. When I release, I will come and meet you. So again, he's um, portraying the relationship that he has with Philemon. So whenever Apostle Paul visits Philemon, uh, he say, I mean, from the letter we learn that it is more. It's a, they have a very, they share a very good relationship where he goes and stays with him in his house. They have a very good rapport. And that was one of the reasons why Apostle Paul, even without any second thought, he writes a letter plea to forgive Onesimus. So Paul wrote this personal letter to Onesimus, expecting forgiveness. Indeed, yes, this letter is very powerful in many reasons. Because it is the only letter where Apostle Paul does not mention uh, uh, Jesus' death and resurrection. And then he does share a gospel message about love, about forgiveness, about importance of reconciliation, treating another person on the ground uh, of Christ, like, you know, on the same level ground. So that may be one of the reasons why the Karen decided to keep include this letter in the New Testament. They never ignored this letter because forgiveness is the vital part in every Christian life. Treating a brother and sister equal in Christ is very important. There should not be any bias between a master and a slave because this was the nature of lifestyle in back then, those days. There was always a division between a master and a slave. But here, this letter brings a reconciliation. Even though he did not explain. You know, talk more of Jesus, but then he actually saying, Whatever he owes, put on me, I owe it to you. And he's also saying that Apostle Paul lived a life as a living example. Maybe that was one of the reasons so boldly in one of the Christ. So, what happened? Now, Onesimus carries this letter along with it and he goes and eats five men. He shares the letter. I know not much has been shared, but I am sure five men who was in the Christ would have received Onesimus as a son. Just like our Apostle Paul saw Onesimus as a spiritual son, I'm sure Philemon also would have seen Onesimus as a spiritual son and they would have hugged each other, embraced each other, moving beyond that slave and master relationship. There would have been a true forgiveness. There's a great value that letter holds from, fire, from Apostle Paul. And very likely, when we read through the history, when we read through the history in um, in 110 AD, uh, one of the early fathers, Ignatius, has written to the church, has written a letter to the churches of Asia Minor, and he mentions the name as Bishop of Ephesus was Onesimus, one who was a slave who robbed his master, ran away from his master's house to be lost in the huge city of Rome, bumped into Epaphras, who was a, uh, who was a disciple of Apostle Paul, eventually was led by him to meet Apostle Paul. Now this ran away slave, who was useless, meets Apostle Paul, has an encounter with Lord Jesus, and now his life is transformed. His life is transformed. Who was once a slave, you know, in those days, one, if you're, you're a slave, you're going to die as a slave. There's no way you have redemption from that. Slave trade was so heavy those days. You can never change from that. You can never come out of that. But then 
if you have encountered Jesus, you are free in Christ. And that we see in the life of Onesimus, that truly he encountered Jesus and Jesus freed him from the slave. He grew to be the bishop of the church at Ephesus. And this will explain everything that he is no more slave, but he is grew in the Lord, in the ministry. Even when Apostle Paul met Onesimus in their relationship in the early days, Apostle Paul had seen something great in the slave. And he continued to minister to him, continued to share the gospel of Christ to him. And the life of Onesimus changed to be a testament to what God can do to the one who seeks him earnestly. You and I, when we seek God earnestly, how much more God can change our life? What is impossible by God? What seemed to be dead and gone and useless, God can give life and bring you to something that can be used greater in God's kingdom. When we surrender ourselves to God, when we give ourselves, when we give our life to God, God can make it very beautiful. In fact, people did mention him in Jesus by saying, what good can come out of Nazareth, isn't it? But what happened? Jesus came from Nazareth. So when a surrendered life in Jesus Christ can become useful anytime, even if we are a slave, considered to be useless. And if this is true, even God can change our life when we surrender ourselves to Him, when we seek His forgiveness. God can change. So in what ways has forgiveness been a struggle for you and I? And we accept Jesus Christ. Some of the imp important spiritual lessons that we can learn from this letter is the importance of sympathy for the lowly, the duty of the obedience to the law on one part of the convert, but Onesimus must return to his master. Even before Onesimus can step into the ministry, Apostle Paul makes sure that he meets his master, brings a reconciliation, and then get him back into the ministry that he could serve. And we also see that the Christian brotherhood, the love in Christ, eliminates all the social and the class distinctions. So Apostle Paul brings in this letter and he encourages the forgiveness in our own life. We need to forgive ourselves. We need to forgive each other because that was one of the reasons in the Lord's prayer, he say, uh, Jesus teaches us, as you forgive others, your sins will be forgiven. So at least for our sake, we need to forgive and lead a life that is peaceful, loving and kind. We need to trust God, um, you know, to foster a renewed life in our heart, in our relationship. Just like how if um, through the ministry of Apostle Paul, Lord can restore uh, forgiveness and uh, restore the life of Onesimus in Christ. God can do it through each of our lives. No matter whichever area that we lack or we need forgiveness, we can ask God, God, Give me the forgiveness. Release your forgiveness in me. Just like how um, Apostle Paul pleads for forgiveness with Philemon. And, um, and I'm sure the Lord would have also prepared the heart of Philemon to forgive his, uh, to forgive Onesimus. The same way we can ask God, God, create in me a new heart. The heart that forgives, heart that loves, a uh, heart that asks for forgiveness, both the ways. So can I request one of you all to pray and ask God, God, through this letter, give us the heart, the heart that asks for forgiveness and also heart that forgives 
if somebody has wronged us. Anyone from the class can unmute and pray. Samuel, Sean, anyone can unmute and pray. Am I audible, guys? Can you all unmute and pray? Uh, Ma'am, can you hear me? Yes, Sean, please go ahead. I can hear you. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you very much for uh, being here, Heavenly Father, for his class, Heavenly Father, and leading us lightly in his new knowledge about your word, Heavenly Father. And uh, please leave us lightly to more class to family, Father. And uh, thank you very much, Heavenly Father, for hoping that I'm going to explain all this, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Heavenly Father. And uh, thank you once again for bringing us all here for this class, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Anyone else would like to pray? Am I audible? Yes, yes. Please go ahead, Nina. Uh, thank you, dear Father, for this blessed time that you gave us, Master, and for all that you spoke to us, Master, through your word. We want to thank you, Lord, for the undeniable impact of Paul's life, Master. And may yes. we learn, Lord Jesus, that when we meet with people, uh, we need to carry or let your presence be what is manifest, Lord, in each one of our lives. And we also want to thank you for the wonderful lesson that we learned about the forgiveness, Lord, and uh, accepting everyone, no matter what, what wrong was done, but that heart to be able to forgive completely and accept yes. uh, the one in the beloved as as it as was in this particular chapter lord thank you so much for all the lessons that we learned uh through yes. philemon lord and uh, maybe imbibe these qualities lord whatever we need to refine and change we pray that you will enable us to do that lord through the spirit of god thank you for being with each one of us thank you for pastor diana and each one of us commit into your hands in jesus precious name we pray Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for praying. Thank you, each one, for joining in today's session. God bless you all tomorrow with the next letter. Thank you.